Good everyone. What I'm going to show you uh, is the process I go through at having a go and painting a protea. Now we've got the name of it. This is a painting that I did. It's a photo of a painting that's about um, sort of three foot by about two foot. And I did it on paper with an acrylic paint. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint on corrugated iron, a tin of corrugated iron. Um, and I haven't done anything special to it. I've just given it a bit of a clean and I've drawn my picture. And over time, I have collected so much um, house paint, exterior house paint, that I went through and I made a colour study of the colours that I had in order to work out what colours I'm going to use for my Protea. So you can see here I've named them. So I just put a swatch of colour down and just blended it out. And then I've got some two different types of yellows, 20 reds, but two yellows and a couple of greens. But these are the two that I chose. And then what I've done is I've used what my number 11 is. And what I do is I actually can't remember what that 11 is. And then I've done um, swatches and I've blended the reds in with that so I can see how that turns out. This is my big tin of yellow. Yeah, really technical name, a bit embarrassing, but never mind. And then I've put that down and done the same thing. I've taken my reds and blended it to see what I get. And then I've taken two greens that I have and then I've mixed it with the two yellows that I have. So from there, then I will make a start on my piece. Now, the reason I do this is because, let's say I'm working and I go, okay, oh, I needed sort of a different color. Instead of wasting my time um, mixing and blending it again, I can look at different swatches that I've made and I already have a uh, color consistency that I'm after. So even if you make it an accident and you make sort of a poo color, um, you know, that could still be beneficial somewhere and then I will always have that. So a lot of times when I paint, I'm very much an underpainting, oh, that's really light. I'm very much an underpainting person. So um, I get rid of my base color. Now, sometimes I use a complementary color underneath and sometimes I don't, just depends what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. So, um, and, and sometimes, oh, that's, well, that's something to show you. So being on the corrugated iron and because it's wet, I went outside the line, shame on me, just comes straight off. You just wipe it straight off. It's good. Uh, so what I was saying was, um, <laughs> I'm trying to paint and talk at the same time. You, so yeah, I put a wash down and sometimes I put a complimentary wash. But what I can also do is I'll put, as I'm painting, I put like a similar color down and that gets rid of my base color as well. And then I will go over the top and put in the tone and shapes that I'm after. So you might be wondering, um, you know, Colleen, why don't you just paint over the whole piece? I really like the, in this case, the background of the metal coming through. Um, so I do want to leave those sorts of areas as much as I can. And a lot of my tin paintings um, are done on older tin as well and some of the rust colors that come through on the tin just look fantastic uh, I also like to um, paint in the direction that I will paint my final piece on as well um, reason being I feel that that often gives it um, more depth uh, if that's the effect that you're after in the work so if I just painted over the whole thing, I think it would be very flat. So uh, yeah, that's why I like to paint the sections uh, and paint in the direction that I'm after. Okay, so I actually didn't press my phone on record properly when I was painting this next layer of colour. And you know what, that's okay because it's, um, you know, a little bit scary <laughs> at the moment. So 
Um, the reason being is the same as I've done that yellow coat, I'm actually going to um, put in that base color underneath. And then once that's dry, I will paint over that again. So it all looks a little scary for a start. And then it will come together. Now again, I could just paint over the whole thing, but what I really wanna do is sort of concentrate on the direction that my pieces are going to go in. And I can change some of that tone as I go. See how that has a bit more of a fuller colour? I should probably wait for it to dry. A bit eager. I want to keep going with the painting. Yep. I'll wait for that to dry. So I thought I'd start and paint my um, leaves. Uh, and I had it in time like so, you know, it's not so painstakingly slow for you. But I've stopped it to tell you, can you see here how I've got some of these colors in my leaves? Um, there's times when I, you know, definitely wash my brushes. Um, you know, if I've got a light, a, a white or a black on there. But there's also times when I definitely don't brush my brush, wash my brushes, sorry. Um, because having the color, the main color that you're working with reflect in other places. Uh, spaces in your work is also really clever to do. Now the other thing you can think about doing is leaving the underpainting through for the middle of your leaf. That's not finished but that's something else you can do and often when I paint I try not to have my um, piece touching the surfaces, um, the area next to it as well. So here you can see I've painted a section. I'll just paint over that. And then I'm just going to take a little bit away. The other thing you can do with leaves is if you actually draw through the middle of the leaf, you know, that stem, that can look effective as well.
what you'll notice now is I've actually just changed um, the position of the painting. I'm putting it on an easel. Now, the reason I'm doing that is so that it was a bit hard to see over those edges now that I'm putting in my real color that I want to have. Uh, and it's a good idea to step back from your paintings every so often and have a look at what you're putting together. 